Hi there, welcome back to my channel Scrap and Coffee. I'm here with a rather quick project. I've had a lot of Felicity Jane uh, products that I still need to go through. I had a couple of kits that I didn't even touch yet. Uh, so I wanted to change that and I've made to start with, with the Aspen collection, which I think was from February 2022. I've made this accordion uh, fold binding accordion hinge, um, not sure how to call it, but um, little book which comes together in the base pretty quick and depending on how you decorate uh, that might take you a little longer like it took for me. Also I've used quite a, quite a lot of chunky elements in here so I really, uh, yeah, it's an alligator mount. But for these kind of projects I don't really mind. The only thing is that you want to keep in mind that you don't stress out the binding too much. So maybe you want to hold back with the chunkiness a little bit. And also I didn't do a closure, but you can easily add a closure to this as well. The size for this album, the pages are five and a half inches in height, four inches in width. I have eight pages in here, but again, that's also something that you can easily change. So I have like eight of these white um, pages in there. So going through this pretty uh, quick, um, I do have to say that I also got back to my older stuff from Felicity Jane and added some papers and some embellishments from older collections uh, because that's the fun thing with Felicity Jane that often the colors uh, are the same so you can easily uh, use those products as well. So I have these smaller pockets in here um, mainly to hide the binding a little bit but also because it's just a fun uh, additional element uh, but on the front and on the back cover I glued it down you will see that in the tutorial because it's it's just not so functional if they are hanging loose so I decided to glue them down it does make this pocket a little tight but still you see I can put some stuff in there I don't really like these hearts by the way but they are glued down and if I take them off I will damage the the paper so I'm just leaving it uh, the photo mats, the smaller ones are for 3x3 three three with a small border, so it's a stitched edge and that will stay visible. And then my larger ones are for 3x4 photos. So I just collaged a little bit of my embellishments um, around the photo. And then with my cutoffs from the pattern paper, like when I had my 12 inch paper, I've cut it to the right height. And then I could cut off one, two pieces for on the page and then I would have like a piece like this left over from that 12 inches and from those pieces i've made some of these envelopes coin style envelopes so i do show that in the tutorial as well and i had some of these tags from an older collection as well left over and they fit they fitted in here perfectly so that was easy for me but it's also pretty easy to make something for yourself that fits in there right so this is the actual binding visible here here it the color of the binding worked with the papers and everything so i left it there and then these are for example really chunky embellishments these fabric hearts but i love them so a little pretty simple layout here so here we have another one of those pockets so i've put i've cut up quite some of the three by four cards to make them three by three and then on the back i did just a journaling slash photo opportunity um, these little tags are pretty cute. Here I just used a mini paper clip to attach another photo. A photo opportunity there. Another one of those envelopes that I've made with one of those tags. I hope you're not able to hear what I'm able to hear in your own background noise, but uh, timing is perfect again so then i had two of these three by four cards that one said chapter number one and the other one said chapter number two and i've made them little flip ups so we can add journaling or a picture and another one there so the same thing here again a small card in the pocket and also another journal slash photo opportunity there this is the middle of the page, two of these hearts, so I, this is a perfect example of not thinking ahead because they are chunky and they are in the same spot, so that's doubling the, the bulk there. Not very smart, but hey, what are you gonna do? I love these library cards here, uh, so I've used some of those as well. And again, just a little thing in the pocket. I could add another tag or something in there, but I just wanted to keep the bulk down a little bit. 
This card is actually the thank you card that came with the collection. They are with every uh, kit you get a card like that. So this is Aspen, the inspiration for the for the kit. And I thought it was fun to use it in here as well. Another one of those coin style envelopes, pockets. Another simple layout here. Another one of those library cards. So I think I said it right, I also used some embellishments and stuff from all the collections, but that just goes together really well. And then this is the back cover with again that uh, pocket glued to the back cover. You will see that in the tutorial. So that is the little album for the tutorial that will come straight away. I have the measurements in the video for you. Uh, I'm a little messy with the binding in the beginning, but I think it's still uh, clear what to do. And uh, yeah, I hope you like it and uh, I hope you're going to give it a shot to make one because it's pretty fun if you haven't made something like this already in the past. Because like I said, it's nothing new, but it's really fun to, uh, to play with. So I hope you like it and uh, let's go to the tutorial. Okay, for this little book, I'm going to start with making the accordion uh, binding system. So I've got my uh, pieces of paper for the binding. I'm going to use pattern paper, uh, a solid color that I've chose with the collection that I'm using. It's a scrapbook kit from Felicity Jane uh, called Aspen. It's an, I think it's like February kit of 2022 or something. So um, I've got these pieces too. One is three inch by 12 inch and the other one is three inch by seven and a half inches. So let's start with the big one. I have a little bit of a cheat here because of course I cannot do things normally. Uh, I always want to fold towards the bumpy side. So that's also how I'm going to score this piece in a way where I fold towards the bumpy side on every score line. My first score line, my first score line that I'm making is going to be at one and a half inches. And then I'm going to go every two inch. So three and a half. Five and a half, seven and a half, nine and a half, and I'm trying to keep everything nicely in place. Nine and a half, and the last one is eleven and a half. Now what I'm doing is I'm going to flip it. My score lines stay in the same place, but I'm looking at the bumpy side now. And now I'm going to score at two and a half. Uh, basically in between the two score lines four and a half six and a half eight and a half ten and a half so you can also start at one and a half and score every one inch uh, or you do it like i do then our second piece with uh, the pink side is the side that's going to be showing for me by the way so with that pink side up the side that you want to see up and the seven and a half inches along the top we are going to make our first score line at one inch and then again every two inches so three inch well not every but three inch and five inch and then flip it and we're gonna do two inch four and six so we end with a piece that's one and a half again okay and then like i said i will fold towards the bumpy side on every um, score line and just i'm really precise so you can just grab your piece and make your accordion full but I really like to make sure that everything is lining up before I burnish the folds. So it takes a little longer for me, but um, yeah, do this how, however you prefer to do this, right? You can do this quick, you can do it slow, depending on your patience, your time, your whatever makes you feel good. Let's see for the the second piece i said it i said it wrong so for the second piece that is seven and a half inches we're gonna place it with the side that you don't want to see facing you 
And seven and a half inches on top. And then you're gonna score one inch, three inch, and five inch. I'm going to flip it. And then I'm going to score two inch, four inch, and six inch. So again, we're going to end up uh, with a one and a half part on the end. Okay, so what we want here for our small piece is, uh, this is going to be the outside. The yellow, the mustard yellow is going to be the inside. And every mountain fold is going to be a page. Um, so I want my last one, when I'm looking at the inside of my binding, to go up. And the first one to go down. On this one, this is the long one, again, for the inside, the first one once is coming up. The last one, that half inch part, is, go, is also going up. And we are going to connect it here together. So we're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight mountain folds. We can attach eight pages this way. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to place some tape. You can also use glue, um, whatever you prefer. Gonna go close to the cut edge and a thingy. And just ever so slightly, I'm going to get small scissors here. I'm going to cut about the width of the tape, angling it. I don't want to angle it all the way to the uh, score line, but just a little bit to hide the construction. Um, but it doesn't look weird on the back later on because this is the side that's going to be showing well not all of it but and then we are going to connect these parts together um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just putting a little bit of wet glue here so I can lift it up if I'm not completely happy with my first go and I'm going to place that first part of my smaller piece on top of that half inch and I'm going to go up to that score line don't go over the score line that still needs to function as a proper fold line up top and bottom and make that one long piece so now when i fold it in we have our binding prepared so this is for me it's going to be the inside i'm not going to see much of this uh, and this is going to be the outside the pink color so we can place this to the side. Then I've prepared my base pages, but I'm going to do one with you. I just prepared everything a little bit to save time on the video. But I've got eight pieces and I've prepared seven that are, um, I have to say it right, eight inches by five and a half inches. So it's really convenient. You can use A4, letter size papers, 12 by 12. It will all work. And I scored it on the 8 inch side at 4 inches. Now I need to really score this cardstock properly because it's cracking on me pretty easy. So I'm going to just go over one more time. So at 4 inches. And then I'm going to fold it in half. And when I fold a piece in half, because that's basically what we're doing, I like to line up the corners. To my best ability hold it in place and i feel like something is moving on me so hold it in place and then bring my bone folder back to the fold line because sometimes if you just fold blindly on your score line it doesn't end up uh, right so now i'm going to open it back up get a ruler and you need to do this for all your pieces you can also make one and use that as a template um, I'm going to find the center for this piece that is at two and three quarters and I'm going to go on, I want to measure this on the score line. So from the center I'm going to go one and a half inches and I mark it on top of the score line to each side from the center. So one and a half inches. So that gives me a space between my pencil lines, pencil marks of three inches. And I'm going to cut a slit. 
Now recently I really enjoy using this ruler from We Are Memory Keepers for it because this has this is a non-slip ruler. So I cut from pencil line to pencil line and actually what I did with my other pieces and I will do it for the other pages first pinch my pencil mark because that helps me with um, lining up and cutting nicely. So we're gonna need eight of these. Very simple basic pages. Then what I also prepared is eight of these pieces. So I'm going to do one more. These pieces measure four and a half inches by six inches. And on the six inch side, I scored at three and a half inches. And then I did the same thing. So first let's fold towards the bumpy side, line up my cut edges on top and bottom and burnish. Open it back up. So I like to fold and burnish before I make my slits because it's just for me a little easier to do that nicely in the center of my fold line. So again, I'm finding the center this time. That's at two and a quarter. And again, from the center, I go one and a half inches and I mark that on top of the score line. Let's do it the way I like to do it this time. So I kind of pierce through the paper with this pokey tool. Then get my ruler, line it up nicely on top of the score line and I can see those holes. So I put the point of my blade in the top hole line up my ruler and I cut and I just feel when I'm at that second one and I know that I can stop with my cutting. So we've made that slit in here as well. So at this stage you can decide to decorate uh, before you put everything together. But I'm going to put it together first because I need to make sure that it's all going to work. <laughs> so. Oh yeah, and last up what I've prepared are eight pieces that are just under an inch by four and a quarter. You can also make it four. Just use some scrap pieces that you have. And what I did is I've rounded off the corners with my We Are Memory Keepers corner rounder and I've used a four millimeter uh, side. So just a small rounded off corner there. So we're gonna go to our first mountain fold here. And we are going to slide that through the slit that we've made on the paper. And the second one is going to be one of these pieces. And it doesn't really matter, you can change it up if you want to have your short side um, on top or on the bottom. So let's do it on the bottom for this first one. So we can also slide this on top. And then to keep this all in place, I'm going to use one of these thingies. And we, I hope this fits. I cut them just under an inch, but maybe I need to do seven eighths. I think I'm going to put seven eighths in the cutting guide because that's going to be a, a little bit of a better fit. I will correct it. Oh, let me just do that. Let's see if that's better. Yeah, that's way better. So seven eighths of an inch is what they need to be. So I will re-round the corner. The reason that I'm rounding the corner is basically because I think it helps with sliding in. You can go for any look that you uh, that you want, right? So I need to recut all of them. Okay, I've corrected my um, little strips to three quarters of an inch even because I realized they were too big. So I can slide this in. I can slide that in, yeah, there we go. Um, center it, and from here we can see what we want to do with this page. Now I don't think I'm really looking forward to seeing this mustardy yellow too much. Um, so I will add some glue to cre create a pocket out of this. But before I'm going to glue everything shut, I'm just, I want to see how 
all of this is going to do bulk wise if I do this on every page so now I'm going to do it in the other way where my short side will be first So I'm going to repeat this for all eight pages. Okay, so this is the last one. Um, it's a little bit depending, I guess, on how thick the cardstock is that you're using uh, in the amount of bulk that we've created here. We have to keep in mind that we, at least in my case right now, I am going to... Um, put pattern paper on the inside of my pages and so the bulk will increase a little bit more I'm, I think I'm fine but what I might do to reduce it a little bit is change up some of my blank pages and make my pages out of the pattern paper already so that's an option to reduce the bulk uh, and you can leave out some of the smaller ones in some pages to reduce the bulk and then you can either make your little tab slider I don't know how to call it a little longer if you want to or leave it in the same size that's all fine uh, but it also depends a little bit on how much do you like what you're going to see on this inside right so like I said I'm not a big fan of the mustardy color however I do have some papers with that color as well so I might just decide to use that color on the inside of the patient just have this showing and take this out to reduce bulk but I will see how I go um, with my decorating part so this is the base of the book my next step is to create my covers and i'm going to do that out of chipboard so i'm going to prepare my pieces of chipboard for it and i'll be back prepared my pieces for the cover however what i forgot and we can do it right now is i'm going to glue this part um, of our binding on the top and on the back of our outer pages um, that means that this won't be a part of your page this is what we're going to attach to our cover um, you can do this with wet glue double-sided tape or whatever it is you prefer i'm not sure how well i can get this taped up so let's just use glue it's all fine so i'm adding some glue here up to the score line my outer edges And I just want to make sure that my page is lying straight and nicely up to the score line before I fold this over. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing on the other end. Okay, again, making sure that it's nicely up to that score line somewhat straight and then fold it over now I've also seen versions of that's mostly what I've seen actually is where people place the cover and then attach this part on to the outer cover um, but I like this way better because I don't want to see this on my outside cover and you can hide it of course with better and paper etc but um, yeah I like so you lose this as a page but we have enough pages in here anyway so that's fine so while we're wrapping our pieces of chipboard that's going to dry a little bit so I've got my chipboard to four and one eighth of an inch by five and five eighths of an inch so it's just uh, like a 1 8 inch bigger than my page and then I've got my pieces of uh, I did the pattern paper here I've got it to six and a half by five so I had a strip of five and a half inches on the bottom that I can use to make a, to make a page or decorate a page if I want to so it's pretty convenient this way I've put some double-sided tape on the back so I'm going I want to see this pattern so I'm going to turn it around. I'm going to remove my 
uh, double sided tape I did some quarter inch tape around the perimeter filled in the middle and often I just like to add a little bit of wet glue um, mostly on the places where I don't have any tape but again you can use whatever works for you So I go over this a little bit so I, I can lift it up if I'm not really happy with my placement. Well, that's not very often the case with these sort of things because if you're not completely centered or straight it's not a, not a big problem. But I'm going to try to place this in the center as best as I can so we have a nice amount to overlap or wrap it over on all sides. Now this piece actually has a nice grid so that's kind of helping me to line it up somewhat. Give it all a good burn so we don't have any lines of the glue showing later on. Smooth that out nicely. And with an embossing tool or score tool, I'm going to go around the edge of the chipboard to like score the cardstock a little bit. And if you want to use pattern paper as well, I always advise you to, maybe if you have a little scrap piece or something, uh, to try it first if your pattern paper doesn't crack on you if you score and fold on it because some pattern paper will crack on you uh, so it's a good idea if you're not sure to try it now I knew with uh, Felicity Jane cardstock I've done it before so I knew that was not going to be a problem So I'm going to put some quarter inch tape around the perimeter of the cardstock and I think that will just do for this piece. Giving that a burnish. And then I'm going to miter the corners. So sometimes what I like to do is just pre-fold on this cardstock and then I can see a little bit better where I want to cut. And you want to stay away from your chipboard um, corner a little bit so you can overlap your cardstock there. Just with an angle, stay away from that corner. Oh, this one is going a little close. We'll see how I, how I did. Okay, these pieces can go. Um, then, oh, here it is, my other bone folder. And I like to add some wet glue. So for some reason, I always start on the long edge. I put some wet glue against that chipboard edge. And then I'm going to wrap it over. And I always like to go over with my bone folder a few times, especially if I'm using pen or paper to really break down the fibers and just prevent it from cracking on me at least if it happens I know that I did everything that I could to prevent it and if it, then it still happens, yeah, there's not much more that you can do about it, right? so opposite side, same thing I have so many uh, videos on my channel where I'm wrapping chipboard. It's <laughs> sometimes you feel like you're like a broken record that's repeating the same thing over and over again. But then you never know if there are some new people that are new to this and don't know how to do it. So you don't want to skip it either, right? Okay, so we've done that. Then we're going to go to the short sides. And before we're going to wrap it over, we're going to fold in our bits of overhanging there. So we cover up the corner nicely. Now this one is a little bit on the... I'm not sure if I'm completely going to make it. We'll see. Time will tell. Fold it in a little bit better. Because it's coming back out and I don't want that. Okay, there we go. Oof. Not bad. Okay, that's nice. 
we do the same thing on this side. I hope I'm in frame. Sometimes I work a little bit too close towards myself and then don't realize that my camera is not catching what I'm doing or not completely what I'm doing. So sorry if that's happening. I need to work a little bit further away from me. That's something that I sometimes forget. Okay, nice. So I'm checking my corners if I'm happy with how everything is looking. It's not too bad. So this is my first cover. I'm not sure if it's going to be the front of the back yet. I will decide when I've done my second one. So I'm going to repeat this with my second piece of chipboard. Okay, so I have my two pieces. It's a good idea to get a two if you have pattern paper like this as well. If it's all the same, then it doesn't matter, right? But my two pieces are different in pattern in where the pattern is and what i can do with it now my first thought is oh i'm going to use this one for the front because i have that nice flower there in the middle but then i thought if i'm going to put some embellishments on top so let me get something that i was looking at i'm not completely set on this yet but like i have this house and I have this girl, which is called Aspen, and I have this tree, then that's, it's gone. So if I'm going to place something like that here, I have way more of that flower showing than if I use this one on my front cover. So just before you go and stick it down, it might be something that you want to think about. So this is going to be my front cover because I would feel a little less um, guilty, I guess, if I'm going to put some stuff on top of that. Here I would really just cover up that, that flower that's in the center and it would make for a great back cover. Of for attaching this, like I said, I'm going to attach it, the page I'm going to glue onto my chipboard piece. So this is a good moment for me to think about do I want to use any corner punches because then I might want to add that detail here as well. And I'm really thinking about my cloud punch. Is it scallop? I always call it a cloud punch but it's called a scallop punch. The cloud punch is a different one. I don't even have it. But um, so I'm going to let's well, I'm going to do the back and the front anyway, so that's fine. I'm just doing my first and my last one. The ones that we've attached are uh, binding on. So I'm going to keep that close because I will use that more. So let's see, does it really matter? front back it doesn't right it's all just the same yeah it doesn't matter okay so i'm going to attach some double sided tape on here i just i just like to work with double sided tape in the meantime i'm trying to have some coffee because otherwise when i'm making videos i intend to not take really good care of myself not drink enough, so having some coffee right now. So on the outside of this page, I'm gonna go around the perimeter with some quarter inch tape. I'm not going too close to my decorative edge here. It's a little tricky, right? Because it's all, it's not nice and flat. So take your time if you wanna use tape as well. But what I was going to say is that it's it's all up to you in the choice of adhesive that you want to use. If you like to use wet glue, I'm not telling you that you shouldn't. Because I don't think it makes very much of a difference. It might even be better. Uh, the reason that I use uh, double sided tape instead of wet glue is because I feel that when I use wet glue for constructing my projects um, I kind of warp the paper more it's an it's I feel that I get a cleaner um, a cleaner construction with the double sided tape and I add 
small amounts of wet glue for wiggle time or all that um, but that doesn't doesn't give me the warping like it would when I would use the wet glue only so that's for me my thought process behind using uh, double sided tape instead of wet glue and if you choose if you have a different opinion on that then that's totally fine and that's definitely what you should do it's just I feel a lot of crafting is personal preference and if you use double sided tape I would definitely advise you to use a quality double sided tape because that makes a huge difference okay so this is a little tricky but we're gonna aim for a small border all around uh, so I'm lifting it up and uh, maybe I want to stand up for a second small border on the side and the most difficult part for me is to even it out on top and bottom my space right now that's also because I've used that corner punch with that I also see my construction of my cover a little bit better but oh this is so not straight Ooh, and that's why the wet glue well, maybe I'm going to start right there Sometimes, by the way, I also feel that it's more my cardstock that's not straight than anything else. So maybe in this case the chipboard piece is not completely straight. Maybe I should just not be too worried about it. Okay, so... The front. And then the back. So I... I'm having a little bit of a check on orientation here for my papers although with flower patterns it doesn't really it shouldn't really matter but and of course I also have to mention that if you want to use something for a closure like ribbon you need to think up front on where do you want to attach it and when right so if you want to have it on the inside of the cover then you might want to attach it right now before you attach your uh, cover on top or attach it onto the cover so you hide your construction of your ribbon between this part and your chipboard cover of course you can also have ribbon on the outside um, for now I'm not really set on ribbon or something I might change my mind later on um, I'm not even sure how much I'm going to want or need a closure but these are things that you want to think about up front right okay I'm going to remove these stay backings and add some wet glue So checking my orientation one more time. So this is how it will go. So again, let's. I'm starting with lining up the corner here in the fold with my chipboard, where I think I have a nice border on the bottom and on that side, and I can adjust the side if I think it's needed. But I also, yeah, that will be fine. Like, make sure that my chipboard is lining up somewhat, the front and the back cover. So again, once it's, I'm happy with the placement, I'm giving it a burnish. Because I have wet glue, I want to smooth that out so I don't see the scribbles of the glue. But also, double-sided tape. You get a better stick with your tape if you burnish it, if you add pressure to it. That's an important part of getting a good function out of your um, double-sided tape. And then we have our book. 
here so the on the spine there is a little bit more bulk than on the front so we can place it way more flat there than on the spine but i like that so right now we can decorate and except for the first one and of course the last one because we've glued that down if it's easier for you to take everything out and add your pattern and paper you can right we can just undo all of this take everything out and with that you can also change things up so if you think like oh it's going to be too much i'm going to want to take this one out on this page you can still do that we can still uh, replace base cardstock for pattern and paper if for reducing bulk like i said so my next step will be to decorate this okay i've placed some pattern and paper here on this first on the first page and my first comment that i want to make is that if you know what your pattern paper is going to be at four end you might want to attach it before you attach your covers um, because it's just easier to get your pattern paper on straight basically so i've got my pieces here to cover the page to five and three eighths of an inch yes by three and seven eighths of an inch just want to make sure that i'm not lying and what i noticed is that this piece here on that first page because we are glued down to the cover that doesn't really want to flip nicely so what i'm going to do is i'm going to glue this pocket onto my front cover which i think will look uh, good as well so i'm a little bit in doubt if i want to add my corner punch here as well or do i want to keep it straight i'm not sure so hmm, i'm going to start with adding some double-sided tape here give all of that a nice burnish of course and then what i can do is i can add my decorative paper uh, before i put it on so i have this piece here i'm going to measure to the shortest of basically the longest part here for my decorative punch and that's one and a quarter so i'm going to cut one piece so this is my scrap piece that i have left over from my 12 inches here um, and i can also make it shorter but i'm going to cut one and a half and let's see this was i forgot the measurement of this four and a half so four and three eighths of an inch in height okay that took me a while because i wanted to keep my heart centered on there so i cut off half an inch from top and bottom and i'm going to glue that in place here yep so for that i'm just using wet glue i'm going to try what i'm doing here on every um page where i just got one strip that is five and three eighths of an inch and use that to decorate um like use the front and the back to decorate my piece but that doesn't always work because now on the other pages i also need to decorate this part and i don't have to do that here so that's the only reason that i can actually get away with it here uh wait next up i can glue this no i cannot glue it shut what am i thinking I can decorate this part here i'm just going to use the same paper so this is two and a half so i'm going to cut two and three eighths by again by four and three eighths of an inch in height when i was starting this project i was really in doubt if i wanted to use white paper as a base or black paper as a base and basically these papers are my reason for doubting because there is so much white on a white card that i feel i feel like oh i don't know is this what i like so i intend to go for the black but i for now i'm happy that i went with the white <laughs> so now that this is decorated we can slide it back on here and i actually cut my piece a little shorter i think i cut it just a bit, little bit under four to really make sure that i have enough space on the outside to glue this shut it would be nice if you would go in that thing 
but if you want to cut it shorter you can absolutely can just make sure that it's at least three and a half inches half an inch wider than your actual binding so now i can glue this pocket um, shut now what i can do is i can glue it shut first or i can glue this part down first i think that's better um so I'm going to remove these tape backings now i did notice that i have that mustardy yellow on the inside of my hinge right i'm i'm not gonna prevent seeing that a little bit on every page well you know that is what it is your solution is to use like a solid uh, cardstock that has the same color on both sides but often in pattern paper collections they have different colors on each side so like a base cardstock would be a good option then right okay so some wet glue just to make sure that i get everything where i want it and just going to glue it on here because i just felt that keeping that as a separate page was not as functional on the outer pages so you can leave it out or you can do this where that you still have the feature but it's just attached to your front page um, right i need glue so now that i've done this i'm going to add a little bit of wet glue here and i go up to where my decorative corner starts basically doesn't have to be much close to the cut edge and fold it in be careful with extra glue that might be oozing out so if you're going to glue it shut you want to make sure that you have your pattern paper on first otherwise you can yeah it's difficult to get it in there if it's already glued shut so so there we have it and then i have a tag lying here this is from a different project but we can slide something in there and that still looks good right even though it's glued down it's not what i had in mind in the first place um, but i think it's a good solution uh, so what you can also do is leave that whole part out right where you it depends on how much you like this where you just have this here on the inside that's also that also works so it's really up to you how often you want to use this element and how and where and yeah i think i've went over it <laughs> enough by now so i'm going to continue with decorating my album so there will be i don't really have a photo mat close by but there will be like photo opportunities on my pages and i think you can go up to three and a half by five inch photo and smaller so a nice nice size so i'm going to continue with decorating adding some embellishments um yeah i think i talked about closures already a little bit right but if i decide on making a closure and i feel that i need to turn my camera on for that i will definitely do that so for now uh yeah i already showed you the <laughs> the end product on the beginning of the video so uh yeah i hope you liked it it's a really fun project to make and uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. So thank you for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.